Okay, minions, let's have another little talk. Today's rant is mostly going to be about Sasang fans, specifically exotics, since they're the ones who have been the most active recently. Later on in the rant, I'm going to deal with some annoyances I have with YG, so stay tuned if that's what interests you. Now before we get into the actual rant about Sasangs, for those of you who don't know what they are, let me break it down for you. A Sasang pen in Korean, or Sasang fan as we say it, is a private life fan. So pretty much they make it their goal in their fangirling to invade the private lives of their robots. To quote Wikipedia, for Saw Sayings, the deifying of K-pop idols serves no indirect function. The lawless obsession is the end itself. Close quote. Creepers. So if that definition and some of my explanation does not creep you out enough about them, let me list some of the things that Saw Sayings have done in the past. Earlier this year, G-Dragon from Big Bang pleaded to his Sasang fans to stay away from his house. Somehow, his fans had found out his parents and his sister's home residence, their, their address, and went and hid out in the bushes and stuff waiting to catch a glimpse of the dragon. They terrified his Nuna as she would come home and there's people hiding in the bushes. And they even actually terrified him as he was approached one night trying to return to his home for a visit by these crazy fans trying to get close to him. As most avid K-pop fangirls know, the most creepy and weird situations actually occurred with DBSK and then later JYJ. Just to name a few of the crazy things, they made a key to DBSK's apartment, followed Changmin, and in the process ended up breaking his pinky finger. They froze DBSK's phone account to check to see if they were calling any girls. They tried to find the member's personal seal so that they can register their marriage. One of the creepiest ones that they did was some fans even snuck into DBSK's apartment and kissed them while they were sleeping. All of these incidences are just crazy pants. What are you thinking? Now the most recent run-ins with Saw Sangs have to do with EXO. EXO's barely almost two years old since debut, maybe not even quite that, and yet they have garnered one of the largest fandoms I have seen so quickly. Sadly, with this extreme popularity also comes a lot of Sasang fans. Now, exotics in general are very enthusiastic fans and, you know, more power to them. That's great. I'm glad that you love your group. But with this tendency of being so influential and so supportive, I feel like a lot of people who could be normal fans are becoming Sasang fans. Exotics have actually been banned from attending music shows because they're rather lawless. They weren't listening to instructions, they were trying to get as close to EXO as they possibly could, disrupting everything, and eventually the music shows just couldn't handle it and they banned them from coming. So Exotics could not attend to see EXO perform. This kind of annoyed them, but I felt like it kind of dialed back a little bit after that for a while. EXO has actually even come out and pleaded with their fans to just kind of dial it down a bit. Tao is the one who wrote the most scathing letter, begging them to just leave him alone, let him go where he needs to go without being stalked and having photos taken of him. He wants a private life, but Saw Sangs are all about invading the private life, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. Other members were a little bit more soft in their letters to their fans, just asking them, you know, for your safety, don't follow us, just, you know, stay where you're supposed to be and don't break the rules. The kindness in them kind of changed with one of the most recent events, which was member Baekhyun's brother's wedding that he was attending. The fans there were extremely rude. Some of the fans, when they saw Baekhyun arrive, would stand on tables and chairs or whatever. During the whole wedding, they were being extremely disruptive, calling out his name, trying to take pictures. It's somebody else's wedding, and yet they're focusing so much on the EXO member. The guests and the couple were outraged by this. It was their day. It was not about Baekhyun, and yet these fans made it ridiculous, and I feel so bad for this poor couple whose wedding day has been ruined, all because some fans cannot keep their fangirling down. There have been other run-ins, one I've heard where the exotics were so involved in trying to get pictures with them, they even blocked off an entire elevator area at the airport, and that's just, that's getting a little on the unsafe side, and I don't like it. So, here's where we need to have a little talk. If there are saucings watching this video, which I doubt they are because they could not care less about what my opinion is, that's fine. Or if you know a saucing, maybe just pass this on. Here's what I have to say to you. Get, Get a light. light! Since when was it ever okay to take pictures of somebody in their private life, to stalk them, to push into them? When was that ever okay? You would not do that to your 
teacher. You would not do that to the boy you have a crush on, I hope. It's stalking, it's illegal, and it's scary. Just because they're idols does not make them yours. Yes, they are performing for you. They are making music to please you, but that does not make them your property, nor do they have anything that they have to give you. You do not have to know about their private life. That is their private life. Leave them alone. They are humans, not deities. Remember that. Your old buds are not gods. Calm down. I would actually really like to know where Sawsangs even came from, because it really hasn't been a thing, except for in the past few decades. Now, I remember when the Beatles were huge across the world. Beatlemania and everything like that. That had a lot of Sawsang fans. We didn't have a name for it then because we were just experiencing it. And that got really scary for them. We didn't know how to deal with it back then. We didn't know how to calm them down or really why they were getting so crazy about four boys from England. But there was just something about them and the mob mentality of when you're in a group that all love the same person, you kind of get super excited. I experienced this when I was at the Big Bang concert. Being surrounded by VIPs raised your excitement and your love for them that much more. It's great atmosphere as long as you can keep it under control. Also, where do they find the time and the money to do this? I barely have enough money to scrape in order to go see a concert. These people are skipping out on school in order to stalk them. It's it's a lifestyle. It's not even just a hobby. It's what they dedicate their lives to. And I don't care who you are. If you're a Sawsang fan, your opa is not gonna like you. Would you like a stalker who's stalking you and being all creepy? No, you wouldn't. You'd run the other way. So your imaginations that they'll fall in love with you if they see you or whatever, if that's your motivation, it's not gonna work. I just feel like most Sawsang fans are severely lacking in common sense. I feel like this should be a subject taught in school now because it seems like most people are starting to lose the ability to have common sense. I really think there should be a set of rules given to every K-pop fan as they come into any fandom. First of all, love your opas, but from a distance. Don't feel the need to get close to them. It's not gonna happen, and they'll be creeped out by you if you try to force it. Also, stay in school so you learn how not to be stupid. Third of all, live in reality, not your imagination, or not in drama world. It may work in drama world for you to have an obsession with your opa, you somehow accidentally meet him somewhere and he falls madly in love with you. That works in drama world, but it does not work in reality. I also think a mentor should be assigned to every new K-pop fan. We should start a mentoring program so that we can help these poor fans who don't understand how to fangirl so that they do not fall into the pit of being a sauce. There has to be somebody who can tell them that's going too far back off. I don't know how we can start this, but hey guys, let's just, the online, we're, we're great about being online. Let's just, let's start a mentoring program so we can help these poor souls who seem to have fallen into the pit of saucing them. That's all I'm going to say about saucings for now. They creep me out and I disapprove of everything about them, but that's all I'm going to say about it for now. Now on to YG. YG, you troll! YG has been trolling so much recently. It's starting to tick me off. Before we get on to win, there's the trolling that happened with Taeyang. I don't know what was going on half the time. We just barely have gotten an actual release date, even though he said he was going to come back months ago. Yes, Taeyang is supposedly the one who decided to put it off, but still, it, it's still trolling. He's part of YG, therefore he's YG trolling. Second of all, this month we were supposed to have a 21 album. YG said that they were going to release a song every month until October when they would release an album. It's almost the end of October. Do you see an album? Because I sure don't. Trolling! Also, Big Bang was supposed to have a new song coming out sometime before they start their tour in November. We have a couple weeks, so I'm hoping that he's not trolling, but at the same time, Taeyang is coming back. Why would they release a Big Bang song when Taeyang's just on a comeback? It's not going to happen because YG's a troll. I don't know when or if we'll get another Big Bang song at this point. I... And then we have Win. Oh, Win. The show that simultaneously makes you feel like there's hope in the world as these boys are working so hard and yet rips out your heart, stamps on it, and sends it through a blender because one of these teams cannot debut. Now, I just found out this morning that Team A won! And while I was super, super happy, I had a moment of elation and then dropped completely to the ground in tears because Team B is now disbanded. Poor little Bobby and Jin one and B.I. and I just, I can't! YG did say, and this is where his trolling comes in, that he did not ever promise that the losing team would be kicked out of YG. He just said that they, as a team, would be disbanded, possibly members replaced, or problems fixed. So here's my prediction. YG is not 
fully disbanding Team B. I think he's gonna take maybe a year, maybe four, depending on his trolling level, refine them, and let them debut as another band. So, yes. We don't have to be completely upset because Team B is not completely gone, but at the same time, it's just such a horrible show. I love it and I hate it all at the same time, and it's like Whitey's ultimate trolling program. I just, ugh, ugh, frustration. Now he has promised that they will be opening for Big Bang in their November concert, and they'll be having their official debut with an album in either December or January. YG gives you a December or January or any type of or, choose the later and maybe even push it back another month and then you got a pretty good date. Pretty much as YG fans, we have to wait for YG to just randomly decide something. We don't get anticipation, we don't get to trust anything he says, it's just when he does it that's when we know it's done. I think that's enough ranting for one day. Hopefully the coming months will be a little less annoying to me. We can move on. Leave me a comment below and I'll try to respond to you if I can. And thanks for watching my video, even though it's pretty much me just whining all the time. You know, we're fangirls. We gotta stick together because nobody else understands us. We've got some really fun things coming up on Viva K-Pop. Um, we will be doing a video talking about um, why we're not doing reaction videos anymore on Namaste's channel in a couple days. We just have to film it. And then we also have a vlog coming up for the VIX showcase we're going to in LA and we'll make sure we'll vlog as much as we possibly can and then even give a little review afterwards just like we normally do after concerts. Be on the lookout for Hot Top Spot. We're about a week behind because we had midterms all of a sudden drop a door lap and it was very stressful, but we'll try to get that up soon. We got a lot of music videos to talk about and who knows who will be in the hot top spot. See you next time.